What's happening YouTube and all my Forex fiends out there? Corey Smith here with CoreFX bringing you guys another video here on the YouTube channel. Um, I get a lot of requests from people. I get a lot of um, questions and a lot of it revolves around trend identification. Um, I'm a trend trader. My course is designed around trend trading. A lot of professionals I've traded with also trade in the direction of the trend. Everything in trading is a game of probability and odds and um, when you can trade in the direction of the trend, you are immediately putting a probability in your favor that statistically it is proven trading in the direction of the trend can have bigger profits and better chances of it being a profitable trade versus a losing trade. So we get stronger moves, we get more sustained moves, bigger reward potential um, than trading against the trend. And that being said, there are traders out there that trade counter trend and against the trend and strong zones and levels and all and make money. But here at CoreFX, I trade in the direction of the trend. I teach trading in the direction of the trend. The guys I trade with trade in the direction of the trend as well. So um, that is what we stick to. It works and we just try to develop and get as good as we can doing it. So um, one of the biggest questions I always get is how do you identify the trend? Um, you know, how do you tell for sure if something's in an uptrend, in a downtrend, in a range bound market? And it's not an easy question. And there's a lot of different answers you can get from a lot of different people using a lot of different tools. The biggest thing I can suggest is you find some kind of um, objective criteria that you use to define a trend. I have a proprietary criteria that I've developed that I have in my course that I have an easy tool that I use to give a plus or a minus score to determine the direction of a trend right off of the um, tool. So uh, it's cut and clear. I don't have to guess on every trade what direction the trend is. I use other things as well. Um, that I'll go over in this video here with how you can develop a tool to pick trend direction and um, The most important thing though is that you have something in your trading plan in stone That you follow every single trade and every single analysis that determines the trend direction So the first thing you want to do when you are getting into um, Developing a watch list and looking for trade setups if you are a trend trader You want to narrow down the trades to look for with strong trending pairs and you can do that using the things we're about to go over here, but just make sure you incorporate that in your plan and it's something you follow and stick to. Um, you need a written set of rules to determine the trend direction. Once you have that, then it makes it easier to find your trades, makes it easier to track your trades, to go back and analyze what's working, what's not working. If you have a set plan, set rule you follow, it makes everything easier. So I'm going to go ahead and jump into the um, methods I use to identify the direction of a trend how it can be used and really just how you implement this into your trading. So the first method is going to be um, market structure. Market structure is the first and one of the best methods of determining trend direction. Now this can be the most basic form of just looking at a chart and if price is moving from bottom left to top right, it's an uptrend. If it's moving from top left to bottom right it's a downtrend if price is just bouncing between a top and a bottom in the middle of the screen then it's a range bound um, trend right that's the most simple basic description identification you can use for a trend now um, market structure dives in a little deeper this is pivot points um, peaks and troughs uh, swings and swings highs and swings lows all these all mean the same thing and that's what I refer to as market structure. So if you've heard before, price is setting higher highs and higher lows, or price is setting lower lows and lower highs. This is market structure. Um, it's really using support and resistance within a trend to identify swing points. You know, when we have a trending market, you have strong pushes, and you have pullbacks. Pushes, pullbacks. Downtrend, you have um, drops, rallies, drops, rallies. So we really want to use market structure to identify where these drops and rallies occur. And... Um, you know how to identify them and use them to identify the direction the trend is moving in. Um, so if we are setting higher highs and higher lows, we're in an uptrend. Price is setting, going into new territory, setting new higher prices, and it's pulling back and setting higher lows, higher swings and pivots. I'll go over all these on the charts in a minute. I just want to go over the concepts first. Um, then you've got a downtrend. Price is setting lower lows and lower highs. Sorry, I, I typed the wrong thing in there. That's supposed to be the lower high. Those are just backwards. Uh, so downtrend, price is setting lower lows and lower highs. Uptrend, price is setting higher highs and higher lows. Trend, directions change, trend direction changes when structure is broken. I'll go over that on the charts with you. But essentially, this is how you can use the market structure to help determine the beginnings and ends of trends. 
using your higher highs, higher lows, lower lows, lower highs. Um, and also a trend remains intact while structure is being respected, while structure is holding. So if you're in an uptrend and you have a higher high and then price pulls back, sets a higher low, goes back up, sets a higher high and comes back up and retests the higher low before that, that's still holding the trend. It hasn't been broken. Even though it's a deeper pullback than the last higher high, it's still respecting structure. So I'll go over all this on the charts. I just want to rip through the concepts first so you guys can write down some notes and stuff. And then when I go over the charts, you can see them in action. Moving average is another great tool. One of the most popular methods used for determining um, trend direction, strength of a trend, momentum, all that stuff, you can use the moving averages. Essentially, they're just a calculation of the average price of an asset over a fixed amount of time, plotted as a line chart. So a 20 period moving average on the daily chart is going to take the last 20 days and average the price and plot it in a line and just show you a linear graph version of what price is already showing us. Um, this is why you've heard probably that moving averages are lagging indicator you know they're based off historic price action price is reacting faster than the averages are calculated because they're using historical data so they're a little bit lagging price um, but this can be a, a beneficial tool for us moving averages can be a great way of identifying trend and a great way of building a set plan and a set method for um, really identifying these trends and and putting it in your plan how to identify it right so if you want to set rules for if this is doing that, then I do this. If this is doing that, then I look for this. Um, moving averages are a great way to do it because it's just a objective, very easy to say black or white, yes or no. Um, positioning of the moving averages, one thing you use, you know, if the if you're in an uptrend, you want the lower, faster moving moving averages above the slower ones. So for example, if you have an uptrend and you use the 20, 50, 200 SMAs, you want the 20 to be over top the 50 to be over top the 200. That's the proper placement of moving averages. That's the proper order of moving averages if you're in an uptrend. Downtrend, you want the opposite. You want the lower, faster moving one. You want the slow, I mean the faster moving, smaller, shorter period ones to be below the slower, higher ones. So in a downtrend, we want the 20 to be below the 50, which is below the 200. And that's the proper ordering, 20, 50, 200. That's the proper ordering for a perfect downtrend. Um, the slope of the moving averages. So if the moving averages are sloping high, really sharply upwards, it could be a strong uptrend. Sloping downwards, it could be a strong downtrend. Um, vice versa. So um, the slope can show you the direction as well as the strength of a trend. And also you have the position of price in relation to the moving averages. Is price trading above the 50 moving average? Okay, that's a good bullish sign. If price is trading below the 50 moving average, that's a bearish sign, and so on and so forth. So you can use these as more filters in your trading. You know, I don't want to be long any pair that's trading below its 50 day moving average. You know, for example, if it's not trading above the average over the last 50 days, why would you want to be buying it? You know, you want to be buying strong trends, strong movement. Why would you want to be buying that? So, um, they can be very useful tools when we're identifying the direction of a trend. And then we have other factors. We have Elliott Wave trend analysis, right? Marking the waves with the impulse waves and the corrective waves. Um, you've got trend lines, a great tool. When trend lines are broken, this could be a sign the trend is ending. You've got trend channels. You know, when price trades in a trend channel, it's basically a range in the direction of a trend. There's a support and resistance or, uh, vertically on an angle, diagonally drawn, that price is oscillating between right um, you have Fibonacci level so if you're in a trend and you have a retracement to a certain Fibonacci level that can be a sign for you of a trend reversing if it's going deeper than the 618 trend uh, reversal on the Fibonacci then maybe that's a sign to you that okay the trend is weakening and, and it's reversing it's coming to an end um, that's something you could put in your plan you only trade pullbacks smaller than the 50% Fib and 382 um, there's a number of different methods you can use for these uh, tools and a lot of this I go over in the real depth in the course but um, I wanted to give this to you guys here to get an idea of it as well uh, and then time frame being used so uh, basically one of the trickiest things that I get questioned about that I have people asking me about is with identifying the trend how do you how do you do it when you're trading on different time frames right so um, you could have an uptrend on one time frame and a downtrend on another. You could have three different time frames that you trade off of and every one of them showing a different direction. You know, one's range bound, one's uptrend, one's downtrend. Um, that's why with everything in trading is fractal. So if it happens on the monthly, weekly chart, it happens on the minute, five minute charts, um, just to a smaller scale. So 
trends are the exact same way. You can have trends on the monthly chart. You can have trends on the weekly chart. You can have trends on the daily chart, four hour, hourly, 30 minute, 15 minute, minute chart, right? You can have trends on every different chart and they're not necessarily going to be in the same direction, right? So if we're trading a downtrend on the daily chart, but we have a pullback, that could very well be a strong uptrend on the hourly chart. You know, it could have broken the downtrend, switched the moving averages, trading upwards, setting higher highs and higher lows in the hourly, but on the daily, we're in a strong downtrend and that's just a rally intraday right? So this is the biggest question that I get all the time when it comes to trends. And this is something that I want to try to clear up a little bit and clear the air a little bit um, and get you guys a little bit better uh, adjusted and identified with, you know, how to determine a trend direction and really use it in your trading. So um, first and foremost, you know, you have to figure out what fits your life and your schedule and your um, time frames you know you can't just say oh I, I trade the daily chart because I want to um, you have to see what time you have you know how often you can be in front of a chart how many distractions you have the time of day you can check the charts all this stuff so if you have a lot of time and, and you're able to check the charts a lot maybe you want to trade the lower time frames you know get those intraday moves and all um, in that case maybe you want to trade the trend direction on the four hour or hourly chart you know, maybe that's the trend direction that you want to trade because that's when you're trading it the most. Um, maybe you have a very tight work schedule and you have to trade the, the uh, daily four-hour chart. You know, you have to trade one of them as your entry chart because they're slow moving. You don't have to check them frequently. You can check them once, twice a day, um, something like that, right? Maybe that's how you, how you have to do it. What it all boils down to is every single person is different. That's why with the course, I've designed it so that each individual person can build their plan and strategy around them. That is what matters at the end of the day. Um, so what you need to do first and foremost is determine where and how you trade, what time frames you trade. If that's something you're still figuring out, that's that's a whole other topic for a whole other day. Um, again, in the course, we go over in depth how to figure out what kind of trader you are, time frames, and all based on your schedule, all that stuff. But um, if you're still trying to figure that out, that's another video for another time. So once you have figured out your time frames you're trading, once you have figured out your schedule and what you are able to trade, then now you go to um, those, those time frames. So let's say you have, you know, a decent amount of time. You work full time, but you can access your computer all day or you work part time or your uh, seasonal job and you have the next six months off, whatever it may be. Let's say you have a decent amount of time and you want to trade the hourly time frame, right? Hourly is one of the most popular traded time frames. So let's say you want to trade on the hourly time frame. So if you're trading on the hourly time frame, now you're a trend trader. Whatever time frame you're entering and managing your trades on, you typically want to trade that time frame in the direction of the trend on a higher time frame, on a bigger picture, right? So if you're trading on the daily chart, I would trade in the direction of the trend on the monthly chart. If you're trading on the four hour chart, I would trade on the direction of the trend in the weekly chart. If you're trading on the hourly chart, I would trade in the direction of the trend on the daily chart, okay? So it's two time frames above whatever your entry time frame is, is where you should pick the trend direction, okay? So this is a very simple tool you could add to your trading plan to very easily say, okay, now I know exactly how to determine the trend and trade in the direction I'm trading. I love trading the direction of the daily chart. I've had the most success and um, most traders that I know who trade professionally like to trend in the direction of the daily chart. The levels on daily charts are great. Um, trend lines are great. Support and resistance. Fibonacci works awesome on the daily chart. All of that. Daily is very highly watched and that's what trading is all about. It's psychological. It's a bunch of minds trading. It's self-fulfilling prophecies. It's something that everybody sees and reacts. Supply and demand creates moves. So when you have a time frame most people are watching, most people are going to react to the things on that time frame, which is going to cause, you know, moves all across the board. So if you're trading on the hourly time frame, for example, I would trade in the direction of the daily chart, right? So all in all, you want to be trading two time frames above what you're entering on in the direction of the trend. Okay, so one more time, if you're trading on the four hour chart, trade in the direction of the weekly. If you're trading on the daily chart, trade in the direction of the monthly. If you're trading on the minute chart, trade in the direction of the 15 minute chart. If you're trading on the 30 minute chart, trade in the direction of the four hour. You know, so take two time frames, the normal time frames, you know, the trading view time frames or the MetaTrader 4, the normal time frames. Uh, I know people trade two hour, eight hour, all this stuff, but 
I'm just sticking to the norms. Go two up from what you're trading, right? Now, what you want to do with that watch list, you want to determine the direction of the trend based off of that time frame that you're trading in the trend direction of. So that's where you use your moving averages, your trend lines, your support and resistance, your uh, market structure, right? So I'm going to go ahead and hop to the charts here for a second with you guys to go over this a little bit more in depth and, uh, you know, hands on so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so just going off of a random chart here. Um, I picked a chart that, you know, had some kind of trend direction. Just based off looking at this chart, I would say it's in an uptrend, right? Just by first initial look, I'd say, okay, maybe this isn't an uptrend. It's going from bottom left to top right. Long-term view, this looks like it could be in an uptrend. Um, starting on the weekly, let's say. Weekly chart, starting with the first concept I went over, uh, market structure. So this is setting higher highs and higher lows. So looking at the past 2017 and 18, let's let's start right here because this kind of was the bottom, right? We'll start here. So before this, we had a lower low, lower high, lower low, right? Everyone sees that. So then we bottomed out here. We had this bounce. Still respected structure here, right? This was the lower high. This was the lower low pulled back you could say this was still in a downtrend because this is just a lower low lower high now we could be ready for that lower low but market structure held this prior lower low held right and we retested it so what did we do after that we bottomed out we hit the bottom respected structure respected structure range bound now what did we do came up broke structure this set a higher high, right? Higher than this prior lower high, broke structure. This was resistance support level. The market came up, broke it. This is a new higher high, right? So everyone's understanding this. Lower low, lower high, retested the lower low, came back up, broke the lower high to set a new higher high. Then we got a pullback, price set a lower high. So here is the prior lower low. This is a little higher, lower high. Then what did we do? Pushed up, set a new higher high. Looking left, it broke above the prior higher high. Then what do we do? We pull back, set a new lower high, right? Then what do we do? Push up, set a new higher high. Then again, pull back, lower high, right? So as long as these pivots, these swing points, these are why we call them pivot points or swings highs, swing lows. This is a pivot point, pivot point, pivot point, pivot point. The circles I've marked are the pivot points. This is a swing high, this is a swing low. This is swing high, swing low, swing high, swing low, right? So this is our um, market structure. Now, we have a trend line here. We're in this trend. For this trend to reverse based on market structure where it's at right now, we would have to have price break this support level, this market structure. That gets broken. We have now set a lower low, right? Then we would wanna see a lower high and a lower low, lower high, and a lower low. And that's market structure, right? Swing high, swing low, swing high, swing low, right? And that is what we see when we see market structure. When we talk market structure, that is what we mean. We mean um, price is setting higher highs, higher lows, and it's respecting structure. Doesn't always happen that way, but you can see um, structure being respected apparently. Like so this is a higher high, higher low, Set a higher high, pull back, did come down below the prior higher high, which doesn't invalidate the trend at all. But uh, a nice trend we would like to see, perfect trend would be higher high, higher low. Higher high broken, sets a new higher high, pulls back, sets the higher low on structure of the prior higher high. Right? Why do we like that? Because that's just combining support and resistance in with the trend direction and everything. So then if this was respected, moved up, that would be a nice trend because we've got structure being perfectly respected. But we can still have structure being respected without it needing to be exactly on the higher high broken. So the higher low, higher high is what we really want to um, identify. And I have other trend videos on this YouTube page. If you want to go further in depth into this trend um, analysis, there are some videos there. Or check out the course, corefxtrading.com, and I'll go into more depth there. I just want to show you guys this. So we're in an uptrend, right, on the weekly. We've got moving averages. Now we're below the 200-day moving average. The 200 week moving average on this time chart, sorry. Um, but that is a long term, slow moving moving average. And prices usually act as support and resistance when it comes near it. 
So we are on the we are under the 200 day, but the 20 is above the 50, and the 20 and the 50 are both sloping upwards, right? So the shorter time frame um, period moving averages show us an uptrend. Structure showing us an uptrend. I could draw half-assed but somewhat of a trend line here and that could show us trend right might be able to throw somewhat of a trend channel in here right so it's just showing us an uptrend um, so based off the weekly chart if you were trading on the four hour time frame you could be looking for longs now because it's in an uptrend taking it to the daily chart this is where I want to show you guys how um, different time frames can show you different things all right, so now this is on the daily chart. On the daily chart, however, now I'm seeing a different story when we zoom in here. So from where we were here, we were setting lower lows and lower highs here, right? Then this trend line, sorry, that was a little bit funky. This trend line here was broken with this strong bullish press that set a new higher high, right? So this was a downtrend this was violated with break of the trend line break of market structure so here was prior structure lower high lower low pull back here and respected it at first structure still held still in a downtrend and then we exploded up that set a higher high that broke out of this prior downtrend right so then what do we do we went on a tear of an uptrend. Higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low. Could have been trend changing. Broke to 50, broke down below. Did still hold back here and then continued the uptrend. Higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low. Retested higher high, retested higher low, higher high, higher low, range bound retesting, and then we broke structure again. Right? So, um, Again, guys, I go into this in more depth in my other videos. I have a market structure video. I have other trend videos um, that you guys can show, see a little more in depth on the actual structure. But I just want to show you how to identify a trend using it. So, right, so we set a higher high, higher low, retest higher high, retest higher low, retest higher high. Boom, set a lower low. This was a trend changing lower low, right? Then we set a little bit of a lower high, not totally. I guess this was the lower high up here. And then we set another lower low, swing low. Pull back, now we are setting what could be a lower high. So if you look at this, from the trend on this time frame, we've got an impulse leg, lower. we got a pullback. It's pulling back to structure. This was prior structure, this was the lower high, right? So in this range, we're still all right with the trend direction. Now, um, we're bouncing off the 50 SMA here, which is a good sign. 50 SMA is a strong trending uh, period moving average to use to determine the trend. So that is good. That is something we want to see. So this is market structure being respected. And when you look left and it's been structured in the past, that is a very good sign. This pound Aussie is making very good signs. Another thing that you can use for trends, we want to see the pullback this is made. We throw out Fibonacci and we're right off the 50 SMA on market structure, on the 50 SMA, bearish engulfing, 50 period moving average. This is setting up to what could be a good shorting opportunity. Um, and this is an early trend reversal. So this is a very early trend um, phase. So we had this trend line here. I keep doing the wrong tool there, sorry guys. We have this trend line here price broke with this lower low pulled back to test it and then it broke it there we've got the 50 SMA the 20 SMA crossing below the 50 SMA falling under and the 50 SMA rolling over we got the 20 SMA starting to curl upwards but the 50 SMA which is stronger for trend direction is pointing lower um, we're still above the 200 SMA but we bounced off it maybe after this push lower we break the 200 SMA 200 SMA is a very long term but strong trend um, moving average trend indicator so um, 200 is definitely something we want to pay attention to, but again, it doesn't necessarily have to be. You, if you were only trading long when price is above it or short when price is below it, it's going to be pretty slim pickings to find the trades. So um, this is how market structure works, right? 
broke the structure, set a lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, could be coming down to set a lower low now. Um, that's that's just using the structure analysis. Then again, using the moving averages, we've got the placement of the 20 and the 50. All right, 20 is below the 50 in a downtrend. You've got 50 sloping lower. We're above the 20. Price is trading, but price is trading below the 50. Um, and we don't really have any trend lines yet. You know, trend lines don't really form immediately. Trend lines are kind of when a trend's been existing for a little while. As you can see, this trend line didn't really come into play until after this strong move away that established the trend line. So um, trend lines breaking are a big thing that I like to use to determine when trend has changed. I like catching the moves on the early phase of a trend changing. Usually you get some strong moves. Usually you get some um, you know, strong impulses because the trend is new, it's fresh, and everybody's jumping on board. Um, and identifying trend line breaks is a good way of... of you know, using trend lines to determine this. So when that was broken, that showed us a good idea that, okay, let's wait for price to pull back and then short it for that next phase down, right? So it could be a little Fibonacci, I mean, a little Elliott wave. One, two, three, four, five now, right? This could be, or this could be a corrective phase, A, B, C. And then we go back up. But um, all in all, this looks like it's getting ready for another wave lower. So that's what we want to use for this trend, try to identify that. Now, that being said, we're in a downtrend now on the daily based off structure, moving average, you could say, and it broke the upward daily the upward trend trend line, right? So that being said, if I drop it down time frame, four hour, or in an uptrend, right? Look at this. Price is setting higher highs, higher lows. We've now traded above the moving averages. We're above the 200 day moving uh, 200 period moving average, 50 and the 20. 20 is above the 50, which is above the 200. So we got proper placement. Um, this is an uptrend, right? We're setting higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows, higher high, pulling back to retest the low, but still an uptrend that could bounce, right? Um, so that's where a lot of people get confused. Like, oh, well, if I'm trading a downtrend here, this is an uptrend. And you go to the hourly and it's even more of an uptrend. Now it's been an uptrend this whole time. So now I'm going against the trend. Well, that's where you start to uh, develop strategies like we have a core effects with things like the counter trend line break right so this is counter trend move this is the trend we're trading the hourly chart the daily chart is our trend this is where we identify lower lows lower highs this is where we look for a, an opportunity to enter in the direction of that trend based off this um these tools counter trend lines uh, Fibonacci retracements, all that stuff, support resistance, all that stuff. So we want to identify the trend on the higher time frame, and then we drop it down and zoom in to the lower time frames to find the right time that you think this pullback is coming to an end and it's ready to move down. Now things like this help when we're retesting structure in the daily. We're showing that this resistance is at least initially reacting because look at this strong push off. If it closes the day engulfing that whole prior bullish candle that's a reversal pattern a reversal pattern on candlesticks on a daily time frame is a very strong sign right it's showing bears came into the market took control and ended up holding control throughout the day and overwhelmed all the bearish uh, bullish pressure from the day before so um really this this is a good sign and then you want to zoom in and have additional confluence on your trading plan for when now you could trade initially when this counter trend line breaks you could trade the break of it like it's doing now you could trade a break and retest you can trade a break of structure you can trade this double top pattern as soon as it happens on it and breaks the neckline or anything there's a million different number of ways you can do things but identifying the trend is what we're focusing on here so you want to identify the trend on the direction of the time frame you are trading it in right then you want to go i mean on the yeah so if you're trading on the hourly you're trading the direction of the daily you want to identify the trend on the daily that's where you start looking for setups then you zoom in on the hourly and that's where you have your other things you know that's where you have your trend line breaks your support and resistance breaks your how to set your stops and targets and maybe you have moving average indicators and all that nature there but um the moral of the story is you want to identify the trend on the time frame you are trading direction of the trend on right so I hope this is making sense. I know this is all confusing and all the same verbiage and everything over and over and over, but you want to find whatever time frame you're trading on, whatever your strategy is, whatever your style is, whatever your personality is. I know a lot of you are probably just building strategy. That's why you want to use this um, to help add another level to your strategy. This should be one of your first lines of defense to narrowing down what trades to even look at. Trend trading is so essential, but so simple. 
It is simply a filter. It's like people that trade stocks and they search for stocks. They use stock filters, stock searches. Um, there's certain things they look for. They look for volume. They look for price of the stock. They look for earnings. They look for um, you know debt equity, all that stuff. So this is just a filter for us to develop a watch list and look for trades that are more probable. Our filter is um, the trend direction. So we're trading the hourly. We look on the daily time frame. We find the direction of the trend. It's up. It's down. It's in a range. That's how we determine. If it's in a range, we don't really want to waste our time. There's stronger trending pairs out there to look for that we don't have to waste our time on a range bound trade, right? A range is just going to, your risk to reward is going to be the top or bottom of that range. With a trend, there, the risk to reward is huge because that trend could just take off and run away. Um, so we want to identify that trend. We want to find it on the daily or whatever your trend identification time frame is and then zoom in and apply your strategy on the smaller time frame yes there's going to be different trends on different time frames um, and if you trade breakouts you trade breakout trades in the direction of the trend maybe you want the trend to be agreeing across all time frames that is that is you know a way to do it so let's say for this um, let's see if I can find a pair real quick one sec so let's say for like this pound Swiss franc for example Right, we've broken the trend line. Um, well, you can kind of draw an ugly trend line here that broke. We've broken that trend line, right? We've broken structure way bit, way far. Big little bearish move. We're basing, right? We're in a downtrend. 20 is below the 50. 50 is still above the 200, but they're sloping downward. Price is trading below all the moving averages. You know, technically, this isn't a downtrend. Take the four hour. We're in a downtrend. Price is at lower lows, lower highs. Trading below the moving averages, sloping downward, all that. Take it to the hourly, we're in a downtrend. Price is setting lower lows, lower highs, trading below the moving average, sloping lower, all that. So this could be, if you're a breakout trader, right? Maybe you want to trade the breakout of this strong zone, right? Of this floor. So if that's the case, then you want all the time frames to agree with each other. That is a good strategy as well. That's something that traders use. Strategies, time frames agreeing on the trend direction. When you trade pullbacks like I do, you're not going to be able to agree with them because your higher time frame trend direction you're trading in when you're getting in on a pullback at a discount to the trend is going to be um, weaker. It's going to be a, a counter trend move when you zoom in. So if you're trading a downtrend on the daily and there's a five day rally up to resistance and you want to short it to continue that downtrend, if you zoom in on a five day rally, bull rally on a daily candle chart to an hourly chart, that's going to be a strong uptrend on an hourly. Like I just went over with you guys. So that is the confusion behind different time frames saying different trends. And yes, somebody might be making money off that counter trend uptrend on the hourly on the five minute chart. And the hourly is their time frame for trend. So it's an uptrend to them. I could be looking at the same pair and I'm trading a downtrend on the same pair. So that is where the confusion comes from that everybody always is like, oh, well, no, that's not in a downtrend. That's in an uptrend. I'm trading it in an uptrend. Well, it could be different trends to different people to different time frames. That's how trading works. It's fractal, and there's all different time frames to look at things. So the most important thing to take out of this is you need to figure out yourself. You need to develop your plan, and you need to build a rule list of determining your trend. Find the time frame you're going to identify the trend on. Right? Do that after you have identified what time frame you can enter and exit on. Right? So if you're entering and exiting on a certain time frame, you want to make sure that um, that is what you use to determine what time frame you use for your trend direction. If you're entering on the 15 minute chart, go up to the hourly, then go up to the four hour, and that's the trend direction you want to be in. Now there's obviously more reliable trending time frames. You know, the higher time frames are more reliable typically. The daily, like I said, is a very, very good time frame to use for trend direction. It's very popular. It's very highly used. So um, identify what you can trade, what your time frame and ability availability lets you to do. Then identify what time frame you're going to be trading on. Then take two steps up and look at that for your trend direction. Very simple, very clear cut to the point. You can easily figure out what you're um, looking for and what your trend direction is. And you no longer have to question the trend. You no longer have to take a different trend every trade because you're not sure exactly what you use to determine a trend develop using this tools and this that I just taught you in this video how to determine your trend put it in your trading tra plan and strategy and boom just like that you have figured out um, how to determine trend and you've incorporated that into your 
trading plan so that you have a systematic approach to trading and you have a journal full of trades that you can track exactly because they have the exact same entry criteria every single time. All right, guys, I hope this helped going over identifying trend direction. I have a lot of other information on my YouTube page about trends. I have a lot of other things as well. So check out the check out the page, check out all the other videos. I do a weekly video every single week going over the week ahead on the weekends. I do it as a live webinar for my students. We cover other topics after, but the recorded YouTube version, I go over all the technical charts for the US dollar crosses, the indexes, the SP 500, gold, oil, and I go over my watch list for the week. It's usually at least 20 charts that we go over every single week for the week ahead, showing you watch lists and trade ideas. So tune into them every weekend. Um, check out all the other content on here. I really appreciate you guys taking the time to come watch my videos give me some support show me some uh ideas or feedback you have in the comment section and um it, I'll, I'll do my best to listen to you uh, thank you guys i really do appreciate it i hope you guys enjoy these and i'll catch you in the next one